I'm Laura Zam, and this is Sexual Healing Central. I am here today with Abby Maslin, and she is going to be talking to us about her fabulous book, Love You Hard. Abby is going to give us tips about how to brave intimacy after tragedy, trauma, or change. I'm so happy to have Abby here. Welcome, Abby. Hi, Laura. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. So, Abby, can you tell us a little bit about your, or tell us a little bit about yourself? Let's start with that. Sure. I am a resident of Washington, D.C., of Capitol Hill. Um, I am juggling lots of hats and lots of roles at the moment as an author, a writer, um, a public school teacher, and the mother of two. I'm also a speaker in the wellness and caregiving communities, um, and specifically in the brain injury community, which is you know, the intersection with my memoir, I Love You Hard. Um, this book is about our family's journey through a period of huge and utter transformation following my husband's um, traumatic brain injury in 2012. What's, the, what's your first tip for us? Yes, yeah, so the first tip is, is the one that I learned from Dr. Perel, which is that distance is a key ingredient in desire. And um, when it's lost, one way you can get it back is by giving yourself space, right? And reattuning yourself to your own needs. Until you know what is happening with you, um, until you know what you need, I don't know that it's possible to, uh, to even be able to, to feel that loss or lack of desire, right? To even notice that it's there or to know how it might be possible to get it back. Um, and so, However, that kind of space creation looks for people, I, I, I think it's going to be really different depending on, you know, what the challenge is, but it can be as simple as just setting really firm boundaries um, around your time and your interests and your hobbies, and then erasing that word selfish from your vocabulary. That's an immediate priority because, you know, anytime you start to feel that kind of lurking sense of guilt come back, you kind of automatically deny yourself of the very thing that you need. So selfish has got to go. Um, space is good for not just the individual, but for, for the relationship. So it could be, just to be clear, it could be an, a night out with your friends, out, right? right? Or, yeah. or a, a day off or something, especially for people who might not have the ability to you know, that they are really on call. And, and I'll, I'll tell this, which I, I talk about in the book, you know, when TC got home from the hospital, it was after about three and a half months, um, you know, being in the hospital. And um, one of the first things that his parents offered was um, to watch our son so we could have a date night. And I was like, a date night? So I can sit in front of somebody who can't yet talk to me because <laughs> he was still, you know, um, very much at the beginning of his process of regaining language. And so I could feel more lonely <laughs> with the added pressure of, you know, trying to force this mm -hmm. desire and this romantic relationship. That was like such a horrific thought to me. Um, and, and then it actually made me feel more guilty that my instinct was like, this sounds horrific. I don't want to do this. Um, and <laughs> And I had to start recognizing that, you know, when those feelings came up of like, oh, like more togetherness may not be the solution here to, to the intimacy mm. that I feel is missing. For me, I was really lucky to step away for a, a period of almost a month and, um, and travel and, and take a, a yoga training in, in Greece where I spent days with incredible women who became lifelong friends. And I rebuilt myself during that month so that I could come back in order to be a partner again. And it, and it worked, it, um, it absolutely worked. And I continue to do that in, in less drastic ways. But when I feel myself approaching that point again, I recognize that it, it is time for me to take that space and to rebuild myself before I come back. Really fantastic. Yeah, such fantastic excite, uh, advice. What's the next tip you have? The, the second tip is that living in your body is a, a multi-sensory experience. A lot of us don't realize after a traumatic event that, um, you know, we've, we've entered this like fight or flight 
you know, experience physiologically in our bodies with our central nervous system, and that it's really hard to get out of that place. And often by the time that you've kind of fatigued and you're out of adrenaline, you're not actually going to a rest place after that. It's not like you're returning to the rest space. What you've actually just done is gone numb. You've, you've used up all of your adrenaline. You've used up all of your emotional resources. And so you start to numb out. Um, and so you numb yourself to, to touch, to taste, to feeling, to all, you know, to all of the senses. Um, but it's so subtle, you know, at first that you don't notice that that's what happens. And so for me, going to Greece was this full body awakening and a reopening. I could taste food again. I could feel sun. I could drink water and, and feel the hydration of my body. And these sound like really simple things, but to be living in a full body experience is also the most arousing um, state of being, a state of aliveness. And that can only be good for relationships too. So I sometimes think it's just about going back to the things that we know are good for us. They're the most simple things. They're the things that make us human, but we turn them off sometimes just in order to survive. Um, and we have to give ourselves permission to turn them back on. So great food and lots of time outdoors and walking for no reason, you know, not running marathons and fatiguing our bodies so we can be in great shape necessarily, but just for the pleasure of it. Um, that has been such a huge teacher in my life, just making sure that I stay in tune with those senses and that I keep them activated. I don't really know why I'm here on this planet if it is not to experience it through that lens, right? So I, I think it's just a natural instinct that we turn it off sometimes in order to, to, you know, grin and bear it and get through a difficult chapter as a lot of us have done, you know, over the last year, but it's also time to wake up and, and to give ourselves permission to experience it all. Yeah, I love that. And it's definitely having a relationship, a sensory experience, being able to experience pleasure in these everyday ways is definitely this prerequisite to being able to experience that in, a, in an intimate setting. So I, I love I love that as a as a tip. And what's your third tip? The third tip is to stay open to receiving and this is really tricky, I think, for anybody who has had the dynamic shifted in their relationship um, to the extent that it's made them just overly responsible. Um, you know, after TC was injured, I, I went from like not having a very good knowledge of our finances or never having experienced taking out the trash, you know, just these kind of little things that fell into his bucket of chores <laughs> as you know half of the relationship to to learning how to handle it all myself and I discovered in that process of learning how to do it all that it was actually really empowering to learn how to do it all and to feel so self-sufficient I didn't expect that I really enjoyed it but as he began to get better and and to be able to regain some of those abilities I had to hand some of it back and that was very difficult for me because I was clinging to this fear that if I gave him permission to help, if I opened myself up to receiving, I would get hurt again. He, something would happen. I would lose him. I'd have to be in that place again of feeling so alone and so heartbroken and having to take it back on. Um, and so I just, I just tried to do it all. I just tried to keep all of that intact so that I could feel the security of, of only needing myself. Um, but that is not a way to do a marriage. <laughs> um, and what I learned quickly is that if I couldn't find a way to say to stay, to stay soft um, in some measure, to risk the vulnerability of allowing him back in to help, to take care of me, um, that uh, we weren't going to be able to survive. Our relationship wasn't gonna be able to survive. You know, our intimacy with each other, it, it was predicated on this risk of, of just being open. Um, and, and I think that's why relationships are hard in general, no matter who you are. You know, it is just such a risk of feeling alone again. And for me, I think oh, being alone is my biggest fear. Um, and I think it's true for a lot of us. So I have had to train myself to pause. <laughs> to notice that instinct in myself. And, and I can feel it on a body level as a, as a yoga teacher. I, I feel myself going inward 
and, and to really kind of change even my posture and my body in order to allow myself to stay vulnerable and open to receiving. Um, it, there's also this narrative in our brains that we don't deserve that. Um, and I think certainly I have experienced this feeling of like, I'm just lucky enough that I got to experience another chance at life with, with the person that I love. I don't deserve anything more than that. Uh, but that's such a dangerous narrative, right? We really rob ourselves of the point of being here on this planet when we do that. So stay open to receiving. It is your birthright and it is the path to joy. Um, and it is also scary. And that is a natural kind of reaction. It's a natural feeling to, to, to opening yourself up in a vulnerable way. That's so profound. So profound because caregiving can so much is out of control when you're in a situation right. like that. And sometimes we really, we look for the control where we can yes. and then we're like, don't it hardens take us. <laughs> and it also, it hardens yeah. us, right? It, it hardens we love, us. we're loving hard in a, in a, in a way that doesn't allow us to, to seek what we need, right? Love hard and stay soft and stay and soft hard to do, but, but that's oh my gosh. All. Yeah. All right. I want to end it there, Abby, because that love hard and stay soft, I think is so wise and so helpful. Thank you so much Thank you, Nora. for coming on here. And I, uh, I can't wait to link to your book below and have people experience it, read it and, uh, and get to know you. Thank you All so right. much.